I am Alex, I'm from Higher Horizons. What we aim to do is make sure that you young people listening now have the most information you can to try and make the best choices you can. Um, but this isn't about us, this is about chemistry. So I'm gonna start telling you a little bit about my educational background. So from my GCSEs, I went on to do A-levels in chemistry, English language and literature, German, and then an AS level in Spanish. Now, you might notice that they're a little bit different when it comes to a science course. Um, so that's something that I'm gonna come on to briefly. But after my A-levels, I went on to the University of Leeds and studied an MChem degree in chemistry, which was an integrated master's degree. So I studied for four years and came out at the end of the master's degree. And then I went on to Cardiff University to do a PhD in chemistry. On the left, you can see me there having a very good day at my graduation. On the right, I've just handed in my PhD thesis. So these are both very quite momentous days. And now, as I mentioned, my A-level choices were a little bit different compared to what you traditionally expect. So when I was looking for universities to apply for, a lot of the time I had a face looking slightly like this. And the reason for that is when I looked on a lot of websites for different universities and different courses, I was told that I needed maths. And I didn't have maths. I didn't enjoy maths, particularly at GCSE. So... I originally wanted to do languages at university and then thought, actually, no, I'll go on with chemistry. But the problem there was, as I said, a lot of universities wanted either maths or an additional science, and I didn't have those. And that's where one of my first points comes up, is that some entry requirements can, and the can is underlined because it can be, they may be flexible. And what I mean by that is, for example, if you've got a university and the offer is three Bs, but they want maths and chemistry. If you're going with ABB, but you don't have maths, you might still be considered. Equally, if you're trying to apply for the University of Oxford to study chemistry, but you're predicted maybe Cs, then it's not the right, necessarily the right decision. So some Entry requirements are flexible, but you need to be sensible about the ones that you think could be flexible. And here's my next point, one that Vittorio might be very happy about. Admissions tutors are people too. Your applications are looked at by people. Your personal statement is read by a person. These people can see your considerations, your subjects, your background, your drive to do the subject. And they often, they will take that into consideration. It's not purely oh, you're missing that one math subject, or you're missing maybe an additional science, they will often still consider your application. Admissions tutors want to make sure that you're right for their university, but also that they're right for you. So they're really keen to make sure that everyone's making the correct decision. And this is, we're in a situation at the moment which is very different when I applied to university. Given the current circumstance, Open days, physical open days, are kind of off the table for the minute. Whereas now, universities are pumping a lot of resources into virtual open days. Virtual open days where there will be academic members of staff present for you to ask questions to. Normally, you'd have to go to the university to do that. So I'm based currently in South Birmingham. If I wanted to go to the University of Edinburgh, it's a long way. But with the virtual open days now, they're at the other side of the computer screen. So all of these questions you might have for a lot of universities, you can get answered through these virtual open days. But one thing that I'd like to talk about, as I said, is tips and tricks to make the most of your choices. So there's a lot of things that you might, on face value, take for granted when it comes to a university course. And some of the most important things, I think, are coming up on screen now. Lab work, for example, is part of every university degree, every chemistry university degree, but they do them differently. So let's talk a little bit about that. Labs were, hands down, my favorite part of my degree. I loved seeing that science happen in front of me. But as you can see here, I had the time of my life in my, uh, in my labs. But as I said, every course does them differently. 
So sometimes they're a standalone module. For example, a few years ago when I was at Leeds, so it might be different now, my labs module was worth 25% of my year as a whole. Some universities will have a lab component in every individual module. So it all goes towards your assessment for the year, but they do it in slightly different ways. Also, different universities and different years of the courses will have different amounts of lab time. So that's also something worth considering, because if you really, really enjoy being in a lab like I did, try and opt for a university that has more lab hours associated. If you already know you don't enjoy it, then go for a course with less hours associated. There's all these sorts of things to think about that really add up to the experience that you get. And lastly, some of you may have already seen things about accreditation by the Royal Society of Chemistry. Now that just means that you've met different criteria to be accredited. Victoria might talk a bit more about this later. And now for a course to be accredited, quite often you'll have to do an extended research project in either your third for your bachelor's or your fourth year for your master's. And that can be about eight weeks for a bachelor's course and a bit longer over the whole year for the master's course. So if you're particularly keen on maybe a career in research or further study, you might want to look out for those accredited degrees. And the next thing I want to talk about is assessment. Now, assessment might not be something that you initially think about, but I will be very, very honest here. I struggled because my course had a lot of exams. Chemistry used to be a very exam heavy subject. A lot of your assessment would be on a final exam. And now I'm not good at exams. I panic under pressure. Everything goes out of my head. I can't remember a thing. So coursework was a lot better for me. But my course didn't have that much coursework. It had a lot of exams. So if you know that you're better at coursework than you are at exams, talk to the members of staff on these virtual open days and talk about the assessment. Are there presentations? Are they more assessed through labs? Is there more coursework? All of these little things that make sure that you can do the best you possibly can at that university. As I said, labs will go towards your mark. But again, it's making sure that if you like exams, go for an exam heavy course. If you prefer coursework or other types of assessment, try and lean towards something a little bit different. Because it's really important over those three or four years that you're performing in the best way you can. And I understand I spent four years struggling with exams and I know that I would have got a better classification of degree if I'd have had one that encompassed more coursework. So that's really, really something to keep an eye out for to make sure that you're getting the most from your course. Next up is student satisfaction. Now, a lot of university league tables will compare universities against each other based on their research. And now their research is something that goes on almost behind the scenes a bit for you when you're considering an undergraduate degree. But it's a really important part of universities. But for you, looking for an undergraduate course, that might not be the best thing to look for. So you can consider things such as the teaching excellence framework, which looks at universities and compares their teaching, and they're ranked on bronze, silver, and gold. So they give you a bit of an indication of the quality of teaching that you can expect at that university. Some other websites, such as the Times Higher Education and Complete University Guide, give student satisfaction scores as part of their ranking. You can click and it will rank all of the options by their student satisfaction. So you can see how students felt about the course at that university. And that can give you a real good indication as to whether that's somewhere that you think you'd like to study. And next up, scholarships and bursaries. Now, scholarships and bursaries are additional funding that some universities have available. They help ease those traditional financial burdens that some people associate with university. And now, I come from a low-income household, and I was also the first in my family to go to university. And those are two criteria that meant I was eligible for extra funding. I also got a scholarship for getting three A's at A-level, but I didn't get three A's at A-level. 
The thing is with scholarships is they're often pots of money that are available, but not necessarily available for the university to keep if they don't give them out. So sometimes, and this isn't always, the criteria for a scholarship can be a bit more flexible, just like how sometimes admissions can be a bit more flexible. There's lots of things that just because they're in black and white on a website, they're not necessarily black and white. There's always different levels to them. The thing with scholarships is they're often, you're not automatically entered into them. You have to dig around on the website and find out what sorts of scholarships and bursaries that university offers. Because if you've got two universities and you can't choose between them, but one might give you some additional scholarships or bursaries to help you along, that might be a bit more tempting. And the Complete University Guide and Save the Student, their websites have lists of all scholarships and bursaries. But don't worry, I'll include some of these in some follow-up resources when this goes up on the website. But there's other things to consider when going to university, apart from just those things that I've pointed out there. And some of them are coming up now. Optional modules are quite an interesting one. So as we know, my A-levels weren't that sciencey, and I really wanted to keep up my German. I wanted to carry on practicing, and I wanted that to count towards my degree. So in my first year, I was able to do what's called an elective, which was outside of my school of chemistry in German. So that went towards then my mark for the year. Some universities allow you to do this. So if you've got a subject area that you particularly want to keep up with, you might see whether you can choose a module in that in the first year. But some universities don't allow you to do this because they're more, more interested in you really bettering your chemistry knowledge. So if you're keen on other subject areas as well, it's worth having a look at whether your university would allow you to do them. Alternatively, consider joint honours programmes, because a joint honours programme then might allow you to keep your horizons a bit, a bit wider. Closer to home or further away? This is an age-old question for universities. Where do I go? Do you want to stay close to home? Do you want to flee to the other end of the country? The closest I looked was Nottingham, which was about an hour away. And between Leeds and Birmingham, where I eventually went, it's about two and a half hours drive. It can be nice being further away, but at the same time, if you want to go home for the weekend, or if you want to visit people, it can be nice to be a bit, a bit nearer. The course content. Now, this is a really, really important one to me, because if you're studying for three or four years, you want to make sure that you're interested in what you're learning about. Some universities will offer courses in green chemistry, sustainable, renewable chemistry. Others might focus more on medicinal chemistry and biological chemistry. It depends on the expertise of the people in that department. So these are sorts of things that you can ask about and see on those virtual open days. So really try and make the most of them. My last important point here is partner universities. Now, quite often as part of your degree program, sometimes you'll be allowed to go and study abroad for a year. And universities quite often have specific universities in other countries they will work with. So if you know particularly you want to go to one country, check if they work with that university. Check if the university you're applying to already has links there. Or if you just want to keep your options open, then see what countries are available for you to go and study in. Because these little things might make you choose one more so than the other. We've come to the end of my main content, so I've got a few take home messages for you here. And the first one is make use of those virtual open days. I know I've said about it a lot, but you've got the opportunity now to experience so many universities without leaving the environment that you're in. And there's so many different questions that you might have that you can get answered now quickly and from the other side of the screen. Think about what you want from university. And this is obviously more than just the degree. Think, do you want to go to a university that has lots of extracurricular activities and societies? Do you want to go to one close to home, further from home? Do you want one with lots of labs? There's a lot of different things that make up a university experience. It's more than just the course. 
even though the course is a massively important part of it, because it's what you're studying for three or four years for. But think about the other little things that add together to make it, make it what it is. And lastly, don't get caught up in league tables. As I said, the criteria that different league tables are built on may or may not be applicable to you. But you'll be, after university, when it comes to the job market, you'll probably be looked on more favourably as a first class degree from a university that's not necessarily as high up in the league tables than if you don't perform so well, but went to a university that's in the top five in the country. Make sure you're looking at a course that you can perform the best in through the different methods of assessment and also that you're interested in it. Because if you're interested in it, you're more likely to do well in it. Lastly, we have a website here, higherhorizons.co.uk forward slash ask, where all of our officers, members of staff like me that have been to university, are there to help answer your questions. You'll find me on there. So if you've got any questions about anything that I might have said that you think are further down the line, log on to the website and you'll find me and a question will go directly to me. I really want to thank you for firstly listening to me, but also being enthusiastic about your education and really putting yourself out to come along to things such as these, to learn more about the different opportunities that you've got available.